Good evening. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the North Hill Church of Christ in Northville, New Jersey. And I'd like to welcome you all to the, e the PM services of the Northfield Church for Sunday, November the 14th. We'll sing a few songs and uh, then we will have uh, the Lord's Supper and I will have a message for you that hopefully will uh, be enlightening, edifying, and that uh, we can get our <clears throat> teeth uh, into. And so if you would please turn your song books from Songs of Faith and Praise to song number 121. 121. We're going to sing verses 1 and 3. 1 and 3. 121. Come let us all unite to sing God is love. Let heaven and earth their praises bring. God is love. Let every soul from sin awake. Each in his heart sweet music make. And sing with us for Jesus' sake. Our God is love. God is God love. Is love. God, is God is love. Come, let us all unite to sing that God is is our portion here. God is love. His promises our spirits cheer. God is love. He is our sun and shield by day. Our help, our hope, our strength and stay. He will be with us all the way. Our God is love. God is love. God is love. All unite to sing that God is love. Number 83. If uh, most of you uh, go to the Northfield Church of Christ, you can probably sing this without the book. God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. He cares for me, He cares for me. for me is so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so
outlines for the Lord's Supper. Let's turn to number 383. Let's sing verses 1 and 3. 1 and 3. 383. Jesus, keep me near the cross, there a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain, in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the grave. Cross, O Lamb of God, bring its scenes before me. Help me walk from day to day with its shadow o'er me. In the cross. Instructed on the first day of the week to gather together to break bread. Uh, so at this time, we are going to observe the Lord's Supper, uh, communion. It's called the Eucharist. Uh, it is the time that we have set aside to remember uh, uh, your wonderful plan for us and to remember that Jesus was willing to carry out that plan that Jesus gave himself up for uh, you and I, that uh, he endured the agony of physical death, the separation for a short time of spiritual death. And uh, we just, uh, uh, just come together at this time in, uh, in awe of what happened on that day. And so as we do that, let's remember uh, that uh, as these uh, emblems that we have here are representative of the body that he gave up for us and the blood that he shed. Uh, let's pray, pray for the bread, please. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful that uh, uh, in your infinite wisdom, you had a plan for us, and that plan was all along to uh, one day present to us a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Uh, we are just so grateful that Jesus was willing to carry out that plan, to endure the agony of the cross, that he uh, gave up his life that we one day might live. Be with us as we partake, we pray it in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the cup. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus shed his innocent blood and we understand that there's power in that blood. We understand the power that's there, and it is the power to wash away our sins. 
we are just so infinitely blessed that we have this uh, blood shed for us that uh, our transgressions, as you have told us, will be remembered no more. And we just pray as we uh, come to this really solemn time in our worship service that we'll remember what Jesus did for us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And because we paused between the song service and the lesson, uh, it's at this time that we will, uh, uh, as we have been instructed, that we will give back to the Lord that which uh, we have been prospered. Help us um, that um, we'll understand that uh, all good gifts come from you. Help us that uh, we would give with an open heart that we would give uh, cheerfully, that we would give with gratitude, that we would give uh, with the, the uh, knowledge that uh, these monies will be used to further your work. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that not only we have the ability to give, but that we have the desire to give. And at this time in our service, we think of in monetary ways, even though there are so many ways that we can give back to you. Uh, we know that we need to give of ourselves, give of our time, give of our efforts, but it's at this time that we're going to give back that which we have been prospered monetarily. Uh, help our church to use these funds in a way that would help others, that would uh, show us to be a benevolent institution and would also serve uh, uh, to uh, spread your word in this area. Bless us as we give. We pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And it's our last songbook with the lesson. If you would turn your songbooks to number 453. We'll sing verses 1 and 2. 1 and 2. I was seeking deep, deep in sin, sin far from, from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, within sinking to rise no more. more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted even me, love lifted even me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted even me, love lifted even me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling, in his blessed presence live, ever his praises ring. Love so mighty and so true Merits my soul's best song Faithful, loving, service to to him belong Love lifted even me Love lifted even me When nothing else could help Love lifted me Love lifted even me, love lifted even me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Thank you for participating in our song service. And uh, it's so wonderful to have the opportunity to praise our Lord. 
I hope some of you remembered uh, the lesson last week because this lesson is going to dovetail off of that one. Uh, last week, we talked about the heart can help. And one of the things I think that uh, uh, we mentioned in all of this was that if there is a contest in our life between uh, the head and the heart, in making a decision, very often the heart wins. Um, and so it's very important that our hearts be given to God. And so with that in mind, I'd like us for just a few moments to think of the head and heart. The head and heart. If you would turn your Bibles, if you have them, to 1 John, that's 1 John, chapter 2, and we are going to look at verses 4 and 5. 1 John, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And here are John's words. He who says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. Now, when God is sought, in other words, when we are seeking God, how should reason and emotion play a part? Uh, what, I am asking you, what does knowledge have to do with love? Now, I've separated two things. I've separated head, knowledge, and heart, love. All right, so what does knowledge have to do with love? And let's take this one important step further. What do both knowledge and love have to do with obedience? Because we know that all three of these things uh, have an integral part in us as Christians. Now, since we are told that God is love, God is the ultimate perfection of love. And this is where we get the understanding of what love is all about. God loved us so much, John 3, 16, that he sent his only son to us. And he was willing to have his own son die on the cross. He showed that love for us. And so what we have to do as believers is we must allow God's, God's character to show us what love is. And then we have to conduct ourselves in a way to show what love actually does. Did I get too wordy with that? Let me make sure you got that because that's a, that's a rather important point. We have to allow God's character to show us because God's character is God is love. We need to allow that character to show us what love actually is and then we need to conduct ourselves in such a way to show us what love actually does. So, how do head and heart connect here? How does knowledge and love integrate itself? cut off from the knowledge of God, the thing we call love 
soon becomes weak. And very often it becomes misguided because in love, there must be knowledge. It has to be based on a knowledge. Otherwise, it is simply emotion. And although we can get emotional sometimes when we're thinking in terms of how we love uh, someone, that's not enough. Here's where we have to go. If what we know of God is not accurate, we will not be able to put real love into practice. Our attempts to show love very often will do more harm than good because we don't know God and God is love. Hmm. Now, if we go to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, the Holy Spirit inspired John says, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Now, do you get the words in here? He who does not love does not know God. In other words, the person that doesn't love doesn't have the knowledge of God, for God is love. That's the knowledge that we need to know. So the knowledge of God, I firmly believe, causes us to love. Now get this, here you're going to go to Symes College of Knowledge here. Are you ready for this? He, God, is not only what we love, but it's why we love. The knowledge of God and understanding God is knowing that he is not only what we love, but he is why we love. The knowledge of God ought to and should be our most positive motivation to love. And no one can really say that he knows God if he hasn't been moved on to greater love. And we'll reiterate John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. If this sounds like pretty nifty stuff, it is. This is heady stuff. This is important stuff. This helps us to see if we have the knowledge of God and we have love. This helps us to understand how obedience is tied to knowledge and to love. To know God is to love him, and to love him is to show that love. Now, worldly knowledge can tend to be lethargic, but knowledge of God is an active love. Did, did we get this? God's love is an active love. It's just not saying we love, but is showing that we love through our actions, through our deeds, through our character, through our integrity. These are ways that we show that we love. And not only active, but the person who has the knowledge of God 
and wants to exhibit it through his love is governed by God's rule. And God says, if you love me, obey my commandments. That's pretty simple, isn't it? So knowledge and love are in one word, obedient. Because if we have the knowledge and we love, we will want to be governed by what God's words say and how we are supposed to act. That's obedience. When we take the word of God into our lives, that's obedience. When we live by the dictates of our New Testament, that's obedience. Why? Because as we read the scriptures daily, as we, uh, we assimilate the scriptures, we get to know how God wants us to live. And so knowledge and love are indeed obedient. And so again, let's turn back to 1 John this time, chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, and this verse, uh, chapter 5, the, the verse that we're going to look at is verse 3, and John says this simply. He says, this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. I believe this is what Jesus meant when he said, take my yoke upon, upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But these are John's words. I think John probably is reflecting because he was with Jesus, probably with Jesus when he said those words. Take my yoke upon you. And he said that this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. Now, how do I keep the commandments? Hmm. How do I keep the commandments? Well, first, you have to know the commandments. How do I keep God's word? Well, first, you have to know God's word. Remember, we're starting the chain here. We have to know it so that we can love. And through the love and the knowledge, we'll come to understand that this is the love of God, that we obey his commandments. Because number one, knowledge. Number two, love. Love add up to number three, obedience. In practice, in practice, this requires a serious study of the scriptures. Our obedience to God ought to be grounded in our love for him. We ought to obey God because we love him. And our love is determined by what we know about God. God is Love. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So our love must be determined by what we know about God. And this should be, I guess, enhanced from his own self-revelation in the scriptures. Each one of these scriptures should reinforce the other. And what this does is it results in us growing spiritually. That is one of our main goals in life, is to get spiritually stronger and stronger and stronger. And so the more we know God, the more we love God. And the more that we love God, the more we will want to know him. 
The more we know him, the more we love him, the more we love him, the more we'll want to know him. And so when all is said and done, why are we doing this? Are these just words? Are these words that are just bouncing off of the wall? Or, or do these words have meaning to them? Well, they do have meaning. Because when all is said and done, that's why we want to go to heaven. We want to live forever with the one who is love. And hopefully we will get to heaven because of the knowledge that we have of God, which causes us to love, which causes us to obey, which causes us to put the love of God into action in our lives as we live godly lives. This will help us to want to serve others. This will help us to want to be benevolent toward others. This will help us to want to be a productive member of the Lord's church. Because the Lord's church is God's kingdom here on earth. It is that which Jesus gave up his life for. Let me finish with these words. We must know before we can love. In order to know God, we must think of him often. And when we finally love him, we shall automatically think of him all the time. If that sounds deep, it is. Let me read those words one more time and finish with the Lord's words. We must know before we can love. And in order to know God, we must think of him often. And when finally, when finally we really love him, our thoughts will automatically turn to God. Now, how do I know this? Because Jesus said almost these exact words in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21, when he says, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Because if what I said about having to know him before we love him, in order to know him, we must think about him. And in order to finally love him, we should automatically think of him. It's because our heart will be with our treasure. And our treasure is loving God. And Jesus said it as precisely and succinctly as it can be said. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Are your hearts with God? Is that your treasure? Do you strive every day so that you will know God better and better so that you can understand that God is love and take on his character in our lives and become that love? That's what believers are supposed to do. That's what converts to the Lord's body are supposed to do. When we confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that's our start. That's our start saying that we understand that God sent his only Son to earth and that he died for us. And so if you haven't started your walk yet, we invite you this evening 
to start that walk. Because knowledge leads to love. And together, they lead to obedience. You see, when we finally decide to become a Christian, we have combined our knowledge of God. We have transformed it into our love of God because God is love and we've said, I want to be part of you. I want that love to be part of me. If you need to start your Christian walk this evening, the invitation is open to you. If it is something that you want right, right now, get in touch with one of us. We will be there and we will help you. We will help you to make your confession and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful that we had this short amount of time that we could get into your word. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to understand the parts of us that deal with our, uh, our head and the parts of us that deal with our heart. Help us to understand that we can't love God and we can't love one another until we know God. And bless us as we strive harder and harder to search your word, to find out how to do that. And help us to understand that through knowledge and love, we will read your scriptures and obey what they say in our lives so that our lives will be worthy and our lives will be godly lives. And we will reflect that in how we live and how we serve. Be with us, dear Heavenly Father, on our Christian walk. Help us to each day uh, get stronger. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, as we grow in knowledge and we grow in love to understand that this is where spiritual growth takes place. Be with us uh, tonight. Be with us uh, through the rest of the week. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to look forward as a church to the next time that we meet together. Continue to be with us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.